For nearly three centuries, dozens of settlements here in the Brazilian hinterland have been home to the Calunga, people descended from slaves brought to Brazil from Africa. Many of them who worked in the nearby gold mines escaped at some point to the mountains. Making up the biggest group of people of African descent, the Kalunga chose to remain in these remote areas, partly out of fear that slavery might be reinstated. We're forgotten people. There's no one who helps us. We don't have streets. We don't have clean water. There's no secondary school and no electricity. We have nothing. Adia Souza lives in poverty in São Domingos. He and around 150 other families founded an interest group and are now officially recognized as what's called a Quilombo community. That's the name given to the thousands of settlements founded by escaped slaves of African descent. In recent decades, Quilombos were granted collective ownership of their lands. Brazil was the last country in the world to abolish slavery 130 years ago. Like most people here, Souza is self-sufficient. Even though he's over 60, he still toils in the fields every day. The Calunga Association of São Domingos campaigns to improve conditions in the community. We thought an association would make it easier for us to bring about improvements. Even if things don't get better overnight, we thought they could improve bit by bit. Until recently, progress proved difficult. Even though the village is just 250 kilometers north of the capital, Brasilia, it's tucked away in the Chapada dos Veadeiros National Park. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is part of the Cerrado, a vast tropical savanna in the heart of Brazil. In many ways, civilization feels very distant here. Souza gets home from work at 6 in the evening. By 7, it might as well be the middle of the night. His wife is making dinner. The only light comes from a fire and lamps that burn diesel fuel. They emit noxious fumes, and they're a fire hazard too. Life without electricity is unbearable. You can't get anything done. You're forced to do nothing. As soon as night falls, you can't work. All you can do is wait for the morning to arrive when it gets light again. Things are about to improve. The NGO Litro de Luz is planning to bring light to the Calunga. The church has been repurposed as a community center, where locals are being taught to assemble solar lamps from recycled plastic bottles. Volunteers explain the steps with the help of an illustrated instruction manual, so even locals who can't read and write are able to understand. So this is where the battery goes, black to black and red to red, all right? If you get that wrong, it could explode. Positive to positive, negative to negative. This thing is fantastic. <laughs> the lamp illuminates for five hours and can be reattached to the solar unit and recharged. It can last up to two years. The finished product is tested in the makeshift workshop. The NGO acquires the basic components from manufacturers at low rates. It's funded the initiative with 25,000 euros in prize money it won in a competition organized by the State Banco do Brasil. The NGO spent three months preparing this one-week seminar with the Calunga. There was an intensive effort to get to know the community. We got to know every single inhabitant and their particular case, so we were familiar with their individual needs. Founded in 2014, Litro de Luz is the Brazilian wing of the international aid organization Leader of Light. Since then, it's brought light to over 10,000 homes. Roughly a million people in the country live off-grid. As part of the project in São Domingos, young people are building solar street lamps and installing them at spots agreed upon by the community. Aye. Like the new village square and 
outside the school. We never used to go out at night. Mainly because it's dangerous in the dark. There's forest, cobras. If you step on a cobra, it can kill you. This place has always been a ghost town after seven in the evening. But now that we have street lamps, we can visit our neighbors. We can meet up with friends and go out. It could change our lives. For the time being, there still isn't much of a nightlife here in the village. But now that Sousa has lighted home, his evenings are much longer and busier. Everything has improved now that we have solar lamps. Before, we had to be finished for the day by 4 or 5 in the afternoon. Now we have until 6 or 8. We can start eating dinner later. The children can do their homework later and also go to bed later. Adia Souza still hopes that one day São Domingos will be linked to the power grid, but until it comes, the solar lamps are the next best thing.